method that works on a hand crank reel is uh, for manual fishing. And we have about a 100 foot wind on leader, which is 250 pound test. We have it connected to a rod. We have a 100 pound braid on. And starting from the end closest to the rod, go about 10 feet or so, we have our breakaway system, which is two floss loops connected with a piece of 25 pound mono in between there for our breakaway. And uh, if you get a fish on there and he pulls hard enough, this pops and then the sinker drops off. And all we use to connect the sinker is a little snap swivel and we have a 15 pound concrete sinker on there that we make out of a PVC mold. And just connect this right on there like that. And depending on what type of bottom you're fishing on the structure, you may want a 10 foot lead line, or maybe uh, more like 50 feet if you're fishing a sharp wall because uh, you'd rather lose your sinker than lose your whole rig into the bottom. It's no fun when you snag. So that's there like that, their sinker clipped on there. And then there's approximately 85 feet or 90 feet between the sinker and the bait from our 100 foot uh, wind on leader. 50 feet down in here. So right between, about halfway between the sinker and the bait itself where a ball bearing swivel is. I have a little uh, floss loop right here. Just a piece of Dacron, a piece of uh, wax loop. And we just connect our light to it right there like that. So that's right between about in the middle of our sinker from our breakaway to our uh, swivel for our bait. And you can just turn that on there. All different colors work for them. Caught them in every color we ever sent down. Another 50 feet from there, we have our swivel where we connect our bait to. We use both circle hooks and J hooks. Sometimes when you have a little stronger current, a J hook seems to be a little more effective, but the circle hooks work pretty good too if you have a moderate current or a weaker current. Then we just come down to our swivel like that. Do snap swivels work with this or do you snap strictly use barrel? Uh, we, use, we use a barrel swivel most of the time. Just, uh, feel a little bit safer, you know, in case the fish gets tangled up or anything like that so the swivel doesn't open. But uh, just the way we started using these and we never switched because we don't have too many problems with it. And we use a little bit bigger swivel than normal just to allow for a better movement and if the bait spins a little bit or has a slight spin in it, uh, it won't twist up your leader and all your line. So let me just connect about an eight foot piece of 400 pound leader to this with uh, your hook and your bait on there and you're ready to go. All right, we'll show that in a second. I'm going to show you guys how to rig a swordfish bait. This is a little Bonita, an 18 0 circle hook, some heavy duty wax floss, and a rigging needle. That's about all you need to do. Start out with about three feet of this, three or four feet of that, and a cut your floss. Start out with your needle like that. The trick is you want to put these baits on really good because when you're fishing for the swordfish, they're very sneaky and they very good at getting your bait up, unfortunately. Huh. And then you kind of just go through the mouth like that, through the eyes, through his gills. You really want to time on there pretty good. And then just back through his gills again. Like that. Back through his eyes. And then up through his mouth where he started. What do you find is the best bait that you go out with, Nick? Um, well, in all honesty, I never sent anything down that I didn't bite. Everything from bonitas, squids, mackerel, lizard fish, dolphin bellies, bonita bellies, blackfin tuna, you name it, we've had bites on it. And this is all off of Isla Mirada? All off Isla Mirada. Not Venezuela yeah. or anything, huh? Uh, well, my dad went down there years ago and tried it. Kind of saw how it was done. They didn't catch any, but uh, he knew they caught them down there. Him and Vic Gaspenny and my uncle Scott caught a few here and then we kind of got onto it. So you have it through the eyeballs, through his gills, tied around his nose. The next part is just tying it to your hook like this. And uh, you just want to make sure you tie it to your hook very good because if you don't tie it on there good, they tend to get it off. Kind of just go around there a couple times like that, around the other side. Tie them all up together. And kind of just trim the floss like that. 
and you can kind of slide it to adjust it depending on where you want it on your hook. And it's good with a circle hook a lot of times to expose the hook, you know, you, you can bury them in the bait and sometimes it'll be successful, but they're very good like this. And I always like to butterfly the back end of them a little bit just to give the bait a little extra movement. Kind of just do the last few inches like that on each side. Kind of just break that bone out of there like that. And that'll give that bait a little extra movement like that and allow nice. it to swim. Nice. That's a swordfish bait. Can you hold that down just a tad? Thank you. Right there. That's a swordfish bait. Proven success. Nice rig, Nick. Thank you. That'll work for you.